The robot repair stall is an illustration set within a new world, a world which displays many similar aspects to those seen in the theme of cyberpunk. This drawing gives a closer insight into the ongoings of this city. The aim is to explore this place and its universe through these drawings, and at the minute many of you know that this project is only in its early stages. Someone asked me the other day if I would ever add colour to my work, and I'm definitely open to that, but if I was to add colour, I'd look at doing it digitally and working over the pencil because I'm always more comfortable creating my drawings in pencil first. I'm not sure how it would appear with colour and if I was to do it it would be a separate line of drawings maybe like a one-off series but like usual for this video for this time lapse I've created a brief narrative that helps communicate what's going on with this image bear it in mind that all these quick overviews are to coincide with the artwork but the image here is open to your own interpretation here is the story behind the robot repair stall it's an early start for the employees who work here, and they are up before the sun starts to peek over the vast display of concrete buildings and mega structures. It's useful to get a head start on these time consuming tasks, and when they see the morning light starting to flood into the dense interiors on the levels up above, it's a sign that their day is officially about to start. These workers here work around the clock to fix machines owned by the residents of the city. The stall is a permanent setup below street level and sits within a market surrounded by other vendors and independent businesses. This market is a big attraction to many people in and out of the city. Travellers come for the experience, whether it's a pleasant one or not, most people leave with mixed opinions on the place. The market itself isn't all below ground. In some areas, it seems to almost lift upwards into the busy streets. The stalls in those areas tend to sell products that are in high demand, and as a result they make a profit which justifies the price they pay to set up a shop there. The only downfall is that the goods being sold have to be legal, or at least it needs to look that way. You won't find much of anything that steers outside the confines of the law up on the high level market though. See all of that stuff is lower down. In some way it's admirable how a structure has been formed in a place like this. A common phrase that you might hear is the lower you go the higher the risk. There's only a few people, if you want to call them that, who go down into the depths of the market. That's another story for another time though, because here I want to focus on a place that sits in the middle, the robot repair stall. There are many of these all over the city, some are more respectable than others. This one here has rightfully earned its place in this area of the market because it's known to turn a blind eye, perform questionable deeds and offer as a service which is well needed. If you was to visit this place, you'd be greeted with a vast display of mechanical components. You'd see the employees of the stall halfway through the process of disassembling, constructing or upgrading some form of robotic anatomy. Most of the robots they take in here are usually owned by common city dwellers who don't have the funds to scrap and purchase a new unit. Unit meaning operating system. See when a robot gets brought into the stall, it could be for a few reasons. Most of the time it's due to a, a malfunction in the machine, a physical problem, a few examples being an arm or leg replacement, a visual sensor recalibration, or an adjustment in its movement and control. Like most things, with time the products become faulty and need refurbishing. A yearly servicing is required to make sure your unit, or robot, is performing as required. Just to clear things up, the title robot isn't used often around here unless it's being addressed by a child. For some reason, old residents can't comprehend that what used to be just something that existed in science fiction movies is now part of their everyday life. They decided that calling them units makes it less daunting and more acceptable. It's kind of stupid, but just so you know, I'll be using both names when discussing images and stuff. When a unit is brought in for repairs, it could be a, a physical problem which can easily be resolved most of the time, but if the problem is related to the software and the internal programming, it can be tricky. There are laws and regulations set in place when it comes to altering a unit's software. To give a better example, a lot of this stuff draws some similarities to computer systems. See there are these pre-built components and there's a few which make up a functioning robot. 
Most of these are produced by larger outside corporations, and every so often a new and updated model of each individual component is released. It's against the law to tamper or to try to alter these pre-built systems yourself. These rules are to prevent further problems with the unit and uh, to keep the users safe. If, let's say for some reason you want to upgrade a unit's software or alter its physical performance, then it needs to be sent to a, a verified robotic production company. Company. In a world where the majority of laws in place are overlooked, most citizens of the city respect and abide the ones that involve robotic alteration. They know the potential risk and the problems it would result in if they were to try tampering with a unit's internal operating system. There are a few exceptions though. Independent mechanics who have a license in the field of robotic alteration are able to take small jobs such as updating a unit's software or replacing and fixing certain components. However, they are forbidden to go into a system's code and change what's already there. For example, they can't get a unit remove the code and replace it with one they've created themselves, but trust me, there are those that do it, and one day I'll tell you a few stories. So let's talk about what you are seeing on screen. This illustration captures a few common activities that are carried out here. On the left, there are two people dissembling a unit. On the right, there is a robot which resembles a young boy. Although they are rare, you'll sometimes find that people, normally a couple, will purchase this kind of unit in replacement of a real human child. These kind of machines are programmed to imitate the actions and traits of children. In fact, if it wasn't for the mechanical anatomy being on display, you could probably not tell the difference between human and machine, and the same applies to most living or working things around here. In the background you can see various platforms and levels surrounded by shops and market stalls. This place is like a maze. The various entrances, exit points and staircases make it a task to navigate. Give yourself plenty of time if you visit here. It's normal to see people running about like headless chickens because they have a meeting to attend and decided to do what they thought would be a quick shop before they get there. And depending on the level where they wanted to spend their time, if it was the lower down area of the market, they might not even show up to that meeting. Also, whilst I'm transitioning in and out of this narrative, I want to talk a bit about the approach to drawing these illustrations. Visually, they are quite overwhelming in terms of detail, but that's not always a good thing. You'll notice that there isn't much contrast, and that there isn't good lighting and shadow. I'm aware of this, and sometimes you can be limited by the range of tones pencil lets you achieve. Like I said earlier, I'm thinking of doing a coloured version of each drawing, so I'm going to experiment with it and more on that soon, but I think it would help create a better separation on top of this pencil work. I'm still on this journey where I'm learning more about drawing and revisiting fundamentals. We have a long way to go with this project, but I'm confident and and look forward to it nonetheless. I think that wraps up the story behind this piece, but remember it's just a brief overview, let me know what you think of this drawing, and slowly but surely with each drawing, each story, this universe will come to life. Thank you all for watching, if you enjoyed this video then please leave a like, subscribe to stay up to date with the notifications on if you haven't already, and uh, yeah, keep on drawing, keep creating, have yourself a great day, I'll see you in the next one.